Hey guys, how are you going? I hope you're all doing well and welcome to day 25 of the 30 day health kickstart. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about what really happens when you lose weight. So we're gonna be talking about metabolism, metabolic adaptation, and also the infamous starvation mode. So first of all, let's talk about metabolism. What is it? Essentially, what it's referring to is all the chemical processes that are going on within your body. So as with so many of these things, there are many different factors that go into determining the rate of our metabolism. This can be things like our gender, our age, our body composition and our genetics, but also things like our diet and our exercise. So there are some factors that we can control and some that we can't. Now you'll often hear of people having a fast or a slow metabolism. If you have a fast metabolism, it means that your body is going to be burning more energy throughout the day than if you have a slow metabolism. You'll often also hear a lot of people refer to a slow metabolism as being negative, especially in regards to weight loss, but don't stress too much, we're gonna go into a little bit more detail about that and how you can manage it as well throughout this video. So if metabolism is the sum of all chemical processes that are going on within your body, obviously that's in regards to energy in and energy out as well, then obviously it's going to adapt and change depending on the stimulus that it's given. This is called metabolic adaptation and it's a very, very useful biological function of our body. To understand this concept, let's just take it back to our ancestors who were in a position where they either had an abundance of food or they might not have any food at all. When food or energy was in abundance, our bodies were able to use this energy to a much bigger extent because there was no threat of starvation. On the other hand, however, if there was a reduction in the amount of energy coming in or calories consumed, our bodies could see that there was a potential risk of starvation. Therefore, it would respond by being as efficient as possible with any energy that was coming in. So basically shutting down anything that wasn't really required and reducing the amount of calories required per day to live. And this would basically protect your energy balance and also protect you from starvation. So essentially it was diverting any energy that was required to essential biological functions and anything else was just stored. And it's things like this that I love. So understanding what is happening on a biological level and how our body's reacting to different stimuluses and different energy inputs and outputs to understand why things are the way they are. Understanding this makes energy balance and health and fitness seem so much more understandable. Okay, so we now know that metabolic adaptation is a biological process that is in place to make sure that our bodies work as efficiently as possible to maintain energy balance and also protect us from starvation. So how does this relate to the present day and to dieting? Well, if you eat in a long-term calorie deficit, over time you will undergo metabolic adaptation. Nowadays, dieting is the closest that many of us will come to starvation and famine. When we're in a sustained calorie deficit, obviously we're reducing the amount of calories per day to less than what our body requires. Our bodies see this reduction of energy intake and initiate the same biological processes that it would if we were going into starvation, just not as extreme. So essentially, if you reduce the amount of calories you're consuming below your TDEE and put yourself in a calorie deficit, your body's gonna act appropriately by reducing the amount of energy it expends and becoming more efficient in regards to where the energy goes. So in terms of your total daily energy expenditure or your TDEE, which we've spoken about in a few of the videos in this series, it actually reduces all areas of it. So your BMR will reduce, your TEF will reduce, your NEAT will also reduce, and also your exercise. And this makes sense when you think about it in real life. So we know that as you lose weight, your metabolism will slow down. This can be one of the many reasons that we see the infamous weight loss plateaus. And I did do a separate video all about weight loss plateaus, which I will link up here if you wanna go and check it out. But essentially, plateaus are normal and also expected. So there is definitely ways that you can overcome this. And if you're aware of what's going on behind the scenes in terms of a slowdown in your metabolism or other factors that might come into play, then you can easily manage this. However, there's often confusion between a slowdown or a stop in progress due to a weight loss plateau and something that we hear thrown around a lot, which is the concept of starvation mode. What people are really referring to when they're talking about starvation mode is metabolic adaptation, where we see a slowdown in metabolism as a response to a sustained calorie deficit. The additional concept to starvation mode, and also I think a little bit of the fear factor, is that you can reduce your calories so low that your body will actually go into this starvation mode, which will stop you from losing weight completely, and also damage or break your metabolism. This doesn't happen. If you reduce your calories to an extreme extent, to a really, really low amount of calories per day, your body is not gonna go into starvation mode. Your body would just starve. 
Not only that, but there are so many other reasons why having an extremely low caloric intake is dangerous, such as malnutrition, which has so many implications for your health, as well as it being completely unsustainable and unenjoyable as well. So while starvation mode isn't real, metabolic adaptation is very real. And there's a lot of other reasons why eating an extremely low amount of calories per day is a really, really bad idea and detrimental to your health, other than just affecting your metabolism. This is why it's so much better and healthier just to eat in a small calorie deficit if your goal is to lose fat and just sustain that over a longer period of time where you can enjoy the process, you're still getting all the nutrients that you need and also makes weight loss much more manageable in the future. So if we know that with weight loss, you're gonna see a slowing down in your metabolism, is there anything that we can do about it? And is it really that detrimental to our health? Well, like we just spoke about, extreme metabolic adaptation is dangerous to your health because of what we just spoke about. So eating in a sustained, extremely low calorie deficit is not gonna be good for you and is not recommended. But on the flip side, metabolic adaptation is something that we fully expect to see when we're going through some sort of fat loss or weight loss journey. And this is expected and doesn't mean that you have a broken metabolism. And there are definitely ways in which this can be overcome or managed. Going back to some of the factors that affect metabolism, obviously there were some that we can control and some that we can't. So the main ones that we can control are going to be diet and also body composition or muscle mass. Having higher levels of lean muscle mass means that you'll have an increase in your total daily energy expenditure and therefore you will have a faster metabolism. Simply put, it means just having more muscle is going to be beneficial for you. And to do this, you need to be doing resistance training. So we spoke about this in a video about exercise, which I will link up here if you want to go and check it out. But incorporating resistance training and building lean muscle mass is going to be your friend. There are also heaps more benefits to resistance training and having increased muscle mass as well, which we did cover in that video. So definitely go and check it out if you're wondering about it. Also, increasing your TDEE through increasing your activity levels is going to be a way that you can help. Becoming more active is going to increase the amount of calories burned, and obviously certain exercises are going to burn more calories than others. So you can also check out that video again and get some more information on which ones are going to be best for you, but essentially just becoming more active is going to increase your TDEE and therefore how many calories your body needs per day to keep going. So while a slowdown in your metabolism is to be expected if you're going through a weight loss journey, and maybe the reason why you see a slowdown or a stop in progress, there can also be many other reasons that are to play. Now we have covered some of those reasons in this series, but also I spoke about them a lot in that plateau video. So go check that one out because it's a really useful one in terms of just feeling like you're not making progress. But essentially we can come super complacent even after a few weeks with our health and fitness. So you may start out eating in a calorie deficit, but over a little time, you can start to become very complacent. You might start under-reporting how many calories you're consuming, or you might be overestimating how many calories you're burning through exercise. And all of this can lead to a slow in progress. Again, remember what we spoke about in the last video, weight loss is hard and there can be so many different factors at play and it's very easy to turn to one thing and say, oh, I have a slow metabolism and I'm sort of doomed and I can't do anything about it, but it's usually not the case. So try not to see metabolism as something that's scary and it's actually something that's very beneficial. And once you understand what's going on, there are many ways in which you can manage it and make sure that you are doing the best that you can do in terms of working towards your goals. I haven't really spoken about it in this video because quite frankly, I'm not a medical doctor and I don't feel well versed enough to speak about these in my videos, but there are some medical conditions that do affect your metabolism. And in these circumstances, it can really make it a lot harder in terms of weight loss and working towards your goals. So in regards to that, I would always suggest go speak to a medical professional and get professional advice. I'm sorry, it's just turned really, really bright because the sun has just come out, but we're nearly at the end now. Essentially, I just want to sum this video up by saying, I hope that you understand a little bit more about metabolism and metabolic adaptation and really what's going into a weight loss journey because it's not as simple as A to B as we've spoken about throughout this whole series. The concept of this series is for you to have a good understanding of all the different areas of health and fitness so that when things happen, you can identify maybe what you can change, what you can tweak, and you can just feel a lot more confident in terms of going forward and managing your lifelong health. All right, guys, I will leave it at that. I hope you have enjoyed this video and you have learned something new and I will see you in the next video. Take care.